Hi, this is Dr. Dean Kaleda, Calaveras County Health Officer with a COVID-19 update for today, October 13th, 2020. Start with some statewide uh, data regarding uh, COVID-19 uh, involvement in all of California. Statewide California has reported 850,028 confirmed COVID-19 cases with 16,572 fatalities. Calaveras Public Health, on the other hand, confirms 330 coronavirus cases involving Calaveras County residents with 16 deaths. Our county is currently uh, averaging uh, a lower uh, daily uh, number of COVID-19 cases. Uh, we're now experiencing a rate of 1.61 new COVID-19 cases per 100,000 population. Get, that gives us a daily rate. Uh, so that daily rate compares to the overall state rate of 7.1 new cases per day per 100,000 people throughout all of California. So you can see we're now doing much better than the state as a whole. We're performing 190 tests per 100,000 residents every day, primarily through the test site at the Calaveras County Fairgrounds. We have a positivity rate now of less than 1%. This is a significant reduction from what we had been doing over the last several months. Uh, the overall state rate for comparison is 3.2%. So of all the tests that are done statewide, 3.2% are positive. Calaveras County has seen a steady reduction in rates of new cases and in test positivity rate over the past five weeks. There are many factors for, for why that's the case, and I'll go through some of them. Um, at any event, because of the decrease in the community transmission of COVID-19 that we've been experiencing throughout Calaveras County, uh, we've been assigned to what's called the moderate or orange tier in the uh, state of California's um, blueprint for economic recovery. So as you recall, that state system of tiers has four different tiers. Uh, the most severe uh, or the, the most, um, um, the highest tier is what's called uh, the widespread tier. Uh, that's where infection rates are very high above 10. Uh, then the tier below that is the substantial tier. That's the red color. That's where Ca what Calaveras was um, assigned initially when uh, we went to this new uh, system from the state. Uh, now we are in the orange or moderate tier. And then there's the, um, the minimal tier, which is the yellow tier. And those tiers are important for each county because those tiers define what types of economic and um, um, social activities can be performed uh, legally in each community. So now that we're in the moderate tier, that means that certain um, business um, and economic activities can now be undertaken in Calaveras County uh, where we, we weren't allowed to before. And sometimes if you're traveling to a neighboring county, uh, it's a good idea to see what their uh, tier is because that way you can estimate what kinds of things you'll be able to do when you go to those neighboring counties. Um, so because of we're in this um, orange tier now, um, recently closed businesses can resume or even expand activities with modifications. Uh, so I'll just give a few examples of some of the most common things that people ask me about. Uh, Dine-in restaurant services can uh, be undertaken now in Calaveras County at 50% of the normal capacity that they would um, be able to s uh, serve people at. Um, Likewise, movie theaters, for as another example, can have 50% of their normal occupancy uh, for indoor, uh, indoor movies. Uh, other activities like hair salons, barber shops, personal services, which are things like tattoo and um, nail salons, um, cosmetology services, uh, those types of things lumped together in what's called personal services those can resume in the community with specific modifications. And the um, owners of those businesses can look at the state website and see what those modifications are that they need to put into place. Gyms and fitness centers 
can resume indoor operation with capacity limited to 25% of their normal capacity. And they can operate an indoor or outdoor pool as part of their operations. Again, there are very specific um, steps and procedures and modifications that they need to go through to prevent COVID-19 transmission. Schools are eligible to resume in-person classroom instruction for children uh, at the discretion of each uh, um, school district and the uh, superintendents uh, and um, um, school boards of each uh, school district are, are the ones who make those decisions with the um, recommendations of, of, of public health professionals. Um, so to find out what's open in your county, you can go to the state website and click on what's open in my county and they'll give you more specific business information. There's 290 different business activities which are listed and you can explore what those are and what the restrictions and what modifications are put into place. Um, an outbreak of COVID-19 infections at Avalon San Andreas Convalescent Home has slowed significantly down and is abating essentially at this point. Uh, however, to date, infections in 60 residents and 27 staff members have been reported from the, um, from the nursing home. Um, and this has been confirmed through um, enhanced testing of all of the residents and staff who work there, whether anyone's symptomatic or not. And that continues to happen on a weekly basis until such time that the uh, outbreak is considered over. That's when there'll be two consecutive weeks of no new cases in any of the residents or staff. So the facility continues to undergo close surveillance uh, for the prompt identification of any new cases in both the residents and staff. Uh, and there are very specific um, um, scaled up infection prevention activities and pre infection prevention measures that have been put into place, such as no visitation, environmental disinfection, very strict wearing of personal protective equipment for everyone who works or, or cares for the residents in the, in the facility. Um, Avalon's recently acquired the ability to perform rapid point-of-care COVID-19 tests. Those are the ones that can give you results back in as little as 15 minutes. They have the ability to perform those rapid tests now within their facility for both their residents and staff. And this significantly reduces the turnaround time for test results and improves the efficiency of the disease control response significantly. So this has been a very good upgrade and it's one of the ways that the facility is um, stemming uh, the outbreak that they've been experiencing. Uh, Avalon as well as public health are in regular communication with Mark Twain Medical Center regarding the situation and the potential need for additional hospital beds if things continue to escalate within the, within the nursing home. Um, so far, um, the hospital um, capacity remains quite good. Uh, currently, there are no Calaveras County residents hospitalized with COVID-19 infection. The hospital's normal, regular hospital bed space is quite good. The hospital's intensive care unit capacity is good. And the hospital has adequate ventilator availability. Uh, that's at 100%. And remember, ventilators are the machines that assist people with breathing when their lungs are injured from COVID-19 infection. Mark Twain Medical Center has sufficient um, um, hospital space as well as supplies that they need to care for patients locally. Those supplies are personal protective equipment, PPE. Those are the masks and the gowns and the gloves all those supplies, face shields that healthcare workers use to safely care for patients without getting sick and to prevent transmission within the hospital setting and the outpatient clinics. The OptumServe test site, which is shared between Calaveras and Tuolumne counties, uh, will move on November 1st. It'll move from um, Angels Camp at the Calaveras County Fairgrounds to the Tuolumne County Fairgrounds in Sonora. So this will be a uh, decrease in our community's capacity to, um, to test for COVID-19. 
Um, and we've been in discussions with Mark Twain Medical Center for um, boosting uh, testing capacity in other areas. Uh, but for the time being, no cost COVID-19 testing remains available now to anyone who would like to get it through the rest of October. Uh, the OptumServe test site, um, as I said, is located at the Calaveras County Fairgrounds and can offer testing to people down to age three years of age. It's still what's called the PCR test, the polymerase chain reaction test. And that test is one where you use a nasal swab to get a specimen and see if a person has the, uh, the, the virus right now. Testing is available Tuesday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, and people are encouraged to uh, visit the website in order to sign up ahead of time. Uh, or you can call a toll-free 888 number. Um, but walk-ins will be accepted too, so people can just present to the fairgrounds and say, I'd like a COVID-19 test, and they can accommodate you in that way too. Again, the toll-free number is area code 888-634-1123 uh, for people without internet access. If you can do it online, it's probably a lot easier. And it reduces the time that you have to wait because you've already pre-registered and entered a lot of your demographic information before you've gotten there. So for further information on how to get tested, you can visit our Calaveras County COVID-19 website. Uh, and we have links to the test site and the toll-free 888 number that I gave. Uh, pertaining to gatherings uh, in relation to Halloween, Thanksgiving, upcoming Christmas, etc., new guidelines have been issued by the state of California. As of October 9th, 2020, an amendment was placed on the governor's current stay-at-home order. This um, amendment provides for um, the rules around outdoor private gatherings. So outdoor uh, private gatherings are allowed under a few specific conditions, and they're really simple. Uh, attendees at these gatherings must be from no more than three separate households. So that's probably the best way to, to tell. How many people can get together at one time? Five, 10, 20, 50, 100. Just it should be three households or less, and the duration should be for less than two hours. And so that's a pretty simple way of knowing whether or not your gathering is, um, is um, allowable. Uh, again, there are specific safety protocols that should still be adhered to. Wear a mask, practice physical distancing, washing your hands frequently. It's not re recommended to attend a gathering if you have symptoms of COVID-19 infection. And we've gone through what those symptoms are in the past. Um, and it's also not recommended to attend if you're at high risk for serious complications of COVID-19 infection were you to get it. People who are at higher risk for complications if they get COVID-19 are older people, people with chronic health problems. Um, so basically seniors and those with certain medical conditions. Um, those medical conditions can include um, heart disease, diabetes, uh, chronic lung disease, um, a variety of health conditions just suffice it to say put you at increased risk of uh, trouble if you get COVID-19 infection. Uh, another issue is that public health uh, officials such as myself are very concerned about the potential for concurrent presence of both COVID-19 viruses and influenza viruses that could be circulating um, together this fall. So with both of those viruses circulating this fall and winter, uh, there's a double potential for people acquiring illness that could be dangerous to their health. A simultaneous outbreaks of flu and COVID-19 could potentially drain the healthcare uh, uh, system's uh, resources, could overwhelm the local hospital and medical clinics. Uh, one of the ways to combat that potential is getting a flu shot. Getting a flu shot protects you and your family and has never been more important. This time each year, I talk about the importance of getting a flu shot. 36,000 people on average die of influenza in each year in the United States. And with COVID-19 infection, that's going to be a potential increased risk. The Calaveras County Public Health Department will offer a drive through flu clinic on Thursday, October 15th 
at 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Calaveras High School in San Andreas. That's this um, Thursday. So the drive-in flu clinic is quite convenient and it's a good way to conduct a flu clinic during the COVID-19 pandemic because people don't have to leave their car and can remain um, um, safer during the time that they're getting the, uh, the vaccine. The public health department is preparing for the distribution of COVID-19 vaccine in the community through what are called mass vaccination clinics. Um, we don't have any estimate on the date that we'll be able to get COVID-19 vaccine when it'll be available. Uh, my estimate is not until early 2021, but we're already working on the logistics around distributing the COVID-19 vaccine when it becomes available. So we're continuing to learn more about the COVID-19 infection as time goes on, and this helps guide our public health response to protect all Calaveras County residents against this deadly virus. It remains critically important to adhere to a couple of basic points and a few basic activities, and we've covered them before, but they bear repeating. Stay at home if you're sick. Stay at least six feet away from people outside of your household. Wash your hands. That can be with soap and water or as an alternative antibacterial hand sanitizer uh, is, is, is appropriate as well. Avoid touching your nose, your eyes, and your mouth uh, with unwashed hands. That's one of the way the virus, one of the ways that the virus can gain entry into the body besides just inhaling the droplets of somebody else next to you who might be sick. And for that last matter, wearing a face mask, a face covering over one's nose and mouth when around others is a very important and scientifically effective intervention to reduce the potential for COVID-19 transmission. Uh, as you've heard with my baseball analogy, I, I, I said it last week and I'll say it again, if this coronavirus pandemic were a baseball game, we'd now be in the sixth inning. So you can see in a nine inning baseball game, we still have some ways to go, but we're getting, we're, we're, we're getting there. Uh, this is why in public health, um, with the California Department of Public Health and local health departments such as ours, we've chosen a low and slow approach when determining what activities and businesses should uh, be open and should uh, continue to expand and open further. Uh, it's important for us not to experience a resurgence in cases and slide backward. Public health is continuing to monitor disease activity weekly uh, for signs of resurgence of, uh, of uh, infections and an increase in the rate of infections. And we're especially, as I said, looking to, toward the fall and winter for a potential second wave of infections, which could put the risk of our community's health um, uh, even more, uh, even more um, at, at, at risk. So to continue to move in a positive direction, uh, the public is urged to do the basic um, things that we've talked about. Continue to wear a mask, uh, keep your distance, get tested, wash your hands, and stay home if you're sick. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I can't really emphasize those basic steps uh, enough because they're things that we all can do. They don't cost anything, they're scientifically effective, and they work. So there's no doubt that our current situation is strengthened when we work together as a community. And so that's what we're going to need to do as a community in the fight against this COVID-19 infection is to continue those basic activities. And we'll have to bide our time until a vaccine becomes available and we can get past this. I'd like to conclude by announcing that after 20 years of serving as the Calaveras County Health Officer, it's time for me to step down. It's time for uh, some new blood to come in and uh, take over this, uh, take over the mantle of this, uh, of leading this public health uh, department and this public health response and uh, continuing to go forward. I've provided health officer duties to our community 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the last 20 years. And uh, it's time for me to step back and let somebody come out, somebody else come in and, and, and do this for a while. 
uh, to be a, as to be effective as health officer, I've always done my best to assist those in uh, leadership positions like community leaders, uh, decision makers, uh, the local board of supervisors, uh, Angels Camp City Council members. Uh, I've always tried to um, provide accurate medical and scientific information uh, in order to inform the decision making of those people in our community, as well as technical expertise that's been unbiased by subjectivity or political influence. And in the environment that we're in right now, I know most of you understand what I'm talking about, that's becoming harder and harder to do. These positions like I'm in are hard on those who choose to serve in them. Uh, and it's time for me to uh, refocus, I think is the best way I could say it, uh, to refocus on my patient practice uh, and, and on, on, on my relationships with family and friends uh, that have been um, uh, strained uh, over the last several years, especially the last uh, six months. So due to these considerations, I'll be resigning as health officer uh, my last day of service to the county will be Friday, um, will be this Friday, uh, October, um, I think it's October 16th uh, at 5 p.m. Uh, so I'm confident that under the uh, leadership of Kristen Stranger, who's the HHSA uh, department head and the administrator of the department, uh, and um, the uh, excellent public health staff, uh, the public health department is staffed with very competent, very professional people uh, whose skill sets include um, public health practice, uh, nurses, uh, support staff, um, clerical assistants, everybody working together at the public health department behind the scenes seamlessly protects the health of this community 24 hours a day. And I'm confident, and I'm confident that those people will be able to continue to help steer this community through this COVID-19 pandemic and to continue to protect the health of our residents until such time that a new interim health officer can be uh, um, recruited to uh, um, take over from what I do and a new health officer can be recruited to continue to serve this community, hopefully as long as I have and I'll be uh, available to share some of my experience um, and um, um, knowledge with that new uh, physician as well. So I've always appreciated the support of the public, I've always appreciated the support of the medical community, and I've always appreciated the support of everybody who works for the county in protecting the health of this community, which is, at the end of the day, the thing that we really want to try to do uh, with our, our, our work and our, and, our, and our careers in these fields. So thank you for your support to the public, and uh, further information will be re released from the Public Health Department on our Tuesday and Friday um, uh, press releases.